Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. There have been some electricity grid and grid access developments this week. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the implications. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Firstly, it has been confirmed that government is considering possible public-private partnerships to expand the grid. Yes, we know that the grid and gr grid access, but also the actual physical infrastructure is just insufficient at the moment for the amount of projects that are wanting to connect, particularly in the uh, really potent renewables acreages for wind and solar, which are in the Northern Cape, the Western Cape and the Eastern Cape. So Western Cape and Eastern Cape, particularly strong wind resources. Northern Cape, very strong wind and, re as we know, solar, solar resources. So that's it's become a major bottleneck in the system. So, and we also know that over the years, Eskom has been failing to really deliver new grid, new uh, transform uh, substation infrastructure uh, at the rate that we really need for the transition, as we bring in more renew uh, renewables. And th uh, there's going to be a, there's a view that maybe there needs to be more help from the private sector to get some of these projects accelerated because. In terms of the transmission development plan, there needs to be a really accelerated rollout of both power lines as well as substations. And while it's very clear that as we unbundle Eskom and uh, the National Transmission Company of South Africa emerges from that unbundling process initially as a unit under Eskom Holdings uh, with its own independent board, uh, it, that, that's going to remain a very much a state-owned strategic asset. and. There's no view that there should be any privatisation of that element. If there's going to be privatisation, it's more likely going to be at the gener generation end of the business. So th this is a very core strategic state uh, asset that will remain that way. But to accelerate the process of grid building, government is starting to consider uh, public-private partnerships where the asset will revert back over time to, to the National Transmission Company, the NTC. Um, but we haven't got there yet, so at the moment it all falls under Eskom, and Eskom Transmission Business is, has got their plans, and they've adopted a default EPC type arrangement to try and accelerate it, rather than doing a lot of the building and the designing themselves, which was the, the old style that they used to adopt. And uh, the Electricity Minister, Dr. Khosienza Ramakhopa, has confirmed that they are looking at build, operate, and transfer type models to bring the private sector resources, the finance, skills into this very important uh, grid rollout program but it's it, there's been there is no model yet but it's important that at least we know that they are looking beyond just the arrangement that Eskom itself is taking or making to to accelerate uh, grid rollout and to bring in the private sector so I think there'll be a lot of interest over the next few months as to what sort of model and when those bids will go, come to market and then we'll have to see if there is an appetite to enter into these sort of arrangements. But I think it does make sense, given the backlog that there is in the grid, given that many of the resources, financial as well as uh, skills-wise, are residing outside of Eskom, that we maybe turn to the private sector to do that. But there is no intention, I must emphasise, to privatise the grid company. Eskom has also formally issued new rules regarding grid access. Yes, this is very important because, you, you know, the last public procurement bid window uh, was bid window six for renewables, wind and solar. And the absence of grid queuing rules and um, also having a maybe reservation for the public procurement while there was a reform underway allowing the private sector also to access the grid and wheel through the grid without a license, that's a major reform and it's crowding in a lot of activity and uh, pr private money and projects. But there is this, th th there was this disconnect uh, in the rules. So it was very important to have some certainty as to how uh, Eskom is going to manage the scarce resource and not have people gaming the system, either, you know, putting in, getting a budget quote and then maybe trying to, uh, to, to get the best sort of financial return out of that rather than building a project. Or th also there's been, there's been hogging that's developed because we've kept uh, public programs active that probably should have been closed and the risk mitigation comes to mind. Or ho hardly any of the projects ever closed there, yet they sit with this grid capacity and no one else can access, access it. 
So there's a sort of uh, situation where we desperately need projects to connect, but grid is being sterilized in, in the process. So we did need some certainty of how uh, ESCOM is going to manage that difficulty while there is this lack of uh, physical asset available to connect. And they put out their, their interim rules uh, and they've published them and they've put them out for, uh, well, not for comment. This is the final, they had a period of six months where they consulted with industry and they've now made it clear that, uh, that they want to shift from a first come, first serve arrangement to a first ready, first served arrangement. So there's a lot of emphasis uh, in the new rules and when they go through and give you a, get before you can get a budget quote, that you have to have ticked a number of boxes and really it's, you have to have done proper uh, resource assessments of your site, soda and wind. You have to have done, um, got all your environmental and water use uh, licenses approved. If you're a private project, you have to have a, a PPA uh, heads of terms with the off taker. So there's a lot that uh, a, a project developer, RPP, or a trader has to do before they can get a, a budget quote. What has the response to these new rules been? It's been mixed in the sense that there's an acknowledgement that we need rules. You know? We need new rules. The old rules weren't quite fit for purpose and we had that massive problem during bid window six where not one of the wind projects that bid was able to proceed to preferred bidder status. So we needed new rules. And Eskom therefore pushed pause and therefore haven't been processing budget quotes. So there's been quite, there's quite a backlog something like 40 projects that are sitting with Eskim at the moment that need uh, certainty on whether they're going to get grid connection or not. So there's an acceptance, yes, we do need new rules. The issue is, are these new rules fit for purpose? And the reaction, I think, is, has been quite mixed and quite cool on that. Uh, the word that comes, has come across from all the different associations, these are extremely onerous and also could have unintended consequences in terms of time uh, and getting things moving because uh, basically, for instance, the solar and wind resource assessment is actually more stringent than what the banks are requiring. And, uh, and the banks have always, that's always been the sort of thing that has defined because you have to have these projects of debt funded mostly and they really define the rules in terms of how much resource assessment and basically banks are happy with one year uh, measurement at a wind site, whereas this is saying you need to have two years of measurement. So there's a bit of a misalignment on that sort of front. And there's also a feeling that maybe we could have just stuck with the first comes first serve thing, but have a use it or lose it type clause. So uh, f first have grid queuing rules. So if, if a public sector program is underway you, uh, and people are saying, well, this is the grid that we're going to need. You actually do have to reserve it. You can't let other actors come in and penetrate as they did during bid window six. So you do need to have some uh, rules, but maybe have more time definition. If there's no progress within 12 to 18 months, financial clothes, for instance, uh, getting your design consultants in, signing that off, getting shovels in the ground, then you can revoke that uh, budget quote as, as Eskom. So there's that sort of discussion. And I think all the association says, let's just keep the door, uh, doors open, keep the communication flowing. And I think Eskom agrees because there are, I think, there are potentially some chilling effects that could come in as a result. And we really can't have afford that at the moment. So we need to have rules that, uh, that are sort of investor business friendly, but are also dealing with this big problem of uh, potential for grid hogging at the moment. But I must say that most of the hogging at the moment is really as a result of government keeping programs where people didn't get through to their financial closure open. And that's, that's a big problem. We need to, you know, you can't keep these programs open for years and years. And uh, the other projects could have come in and we could have started seeing project activity which would come and bring relief in terms of our load shedding crisis. So government also needs to make some serious decisions around whether they should keep the risk mitigation and bid window five as, as open-ended rounds. We need to have some certainty there. But yes, so everyone agrees that in the rules, there's concern that these are maybe overly onerous and could have a chilling effect, both in terms of time and in terms of appetite 
for the South African market. And on, on both fronts, we need we need a lot of appetite to do investments uh, on the generation front to end load shedding, and we need this the time issue it needs to be the most important thing. And that is what Eskom is trying to do, you know, make sure that projects are ready get priority, not projects that are just at concept stage. So I think there's sympathy all around, but there's some concern. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.